We are pleased to have Gareth Sheridan, founder and CEO of NutriBand. Gareth, welcome back. Thanks, Greg. Thanks for having me on. Gareth, could you start by giving us a brief overview of NutriBand and, in particular, how your transdermal technologies set you apart in the pharma industry? Sure. So, NutriBand, we are a pharmaceutical company with a specific focus on transdermal technology. Transdermal technology essentially just means delivery through the skin. Uh, the key focus for us is on improving uh, existing FDA approved drugs. So whether that be improving the safety profile using our Aversa technology or improving uh, patient comfort and outcomes using transdermal tech. Transdermal is particularly interesting. It's growing at about twice the rate of the pharmaceutical industry overall. Uh, and this is mainly down to uh, technological advances over the last 10 to 15 years, which is opening up a whole new category of opportunity, essentially, in the space. Uh, what sets us apart, really, is the fact that we do focus on FDA-approved drugs. We're not developing new drugs in-house. This drastically reduces our costs, reduces our time to market. Uh, however, the, the final opportunity uh, has, it does not reduce at a, a similar rate. Uh, you know, for example, our Aversa technology, We've been working on heavily with our partner, Candeva Drug Delivery, since 2021. Uh, we should hopefully have our FDA submission in Q1 of next year, and the revenue opportunity there is $200 million a year for product number one. Um, but we can touch on that in more detail. Yes, absolutely, Gareth. I want to hear more about that Aversa technology. We know that with your Aversa technology, NutriBand has been at the forefront of the opioid crisis. Can you explain in more depth how that abuse deterrent technology works and tell us about the impact that it could have on patients and the broader community? Yeah, so Versa is really our, our core focus at the moment. It's our lead product candidates, our lead technology. Uh, Aversa is a platform tech that's applicable to virtually any patch on the market today with the goal of drastically improving the safety profile of that patch, uh, whether it be from overdose, accidental exposure, and so on. Um, you know, for us, and I think it's quite obvious, the clear candidate for this application is the opiate space. Um, you know, fentanyl, buprenorphine, other opiate-based patches are widely used to treat chronic pain and treat it very effectively. However, in their current state, which is marketed as a generic uh, currently, uh, they are quite, uh, can be quite dangerous or unsafe uh, from accidental exposure uh, or somebody suffering from addiction who wants to abuse this patch. Uh, so this is what we're tackling with Aversa. What we've done is develop a technology that makes it very, very difficult to abuse this patch. And the benefits are kind of threefold. Firstly, you have somebody who is looking to abuse the patch for an addiction purpose, will have a, a drastically more difficult time to abuse the patch. Equally as important for us, and I think uh, you know any regulator looking at this would be accidental exposure. We have data that's come out recently, and unfortunately it's, it's not pleasant reading that there's been a significant amount of um, hospitalizations and unfortunately even deaths from accidental exposure to these types of products, whether it be a child picking up a used patch out of the garbage as an example. And thirdly, and, and again equally as important, is making sure that the stigma and the safety profile associated with these patches uh, is improved drastically so pain patients who rely on these sort of treatments can get access again, where over the last number of years they've had their access cut because of the, the fallout of the opiate crisis. You know, opiates have a negative name and negative stigma, but when used correctly, they're second to none for treating chronic pain, whether that's car accidents, cancer pain, end of life care, uh, there really is no alternative. So unfortunately, you've seen over the last number of years, somebody who was reliant on a fentanyl patch, for example, had their access cut. And that resulted in, in you know, cases where people try to get their opiates from the street now. Um, you know, it's resulted, unfortunately, a suicide rates in the pain community have gone up because there has no adequate treatment. Somebody who is reliant on an opiate cannot be expected to take a Tylenol extra and have the same effect. So we think that's an equally as important issue that we're targeting to make sure patients have access, people who are abusing it don't have access. And, you know, a, a key point, the accidental exposure is reduced drastically. It's very exciting what you're doing, Gareth. You're making a very clear, a much clearer demarcation between legitimate use of fentanyl, which you clearly make, make the case is very much necessary, and the illegitimate use, people who should not have their hands on that. Very amazing stuff. 
Let me just look at this Aversa fentanyl for a minute. You're pursuing a streamlined 505B regulatory pathway for it, and that requires only a single phase one trial, Gareth. Now, could you discuss how that approach is going to reduce development time and costs? I know you've looked at it before, but let's get at it again. And what does it all mean for the time to market? Yeah, so what we're doing is it's a 505B2 pathway. Uh, we are working with Candeva Drug Delivery, who have an FDA-approved uh, generic fentanyl patch. Uh, our goal is to add our Aversa technology to their approved patch and refile with the FDA, which will be the 505B2 process. Because we're not developing a brand new fentanyl patch, we're not developing a new drug, essentially, um, everything that we add is primarily external to an existing patch. Uh, the development pathway is, is quite small. Um, the partnership with Candeva is key for us. Uh, again, we like to work with drugs that are already approved uh, with the FDA. Plus, we have the benefit now of working with probably one of the number one companies in the world in this space in terms of experience uh, and the, the product and the FDA relationship. So for us taking this to market, we've begun working on this heavily in 2021 after our NASDAQ listing. And we're looking and targeting uh, a FDA submission for approval in, uh, early next year. Um, we hopefully will have a six month expedited review on that because of the, the opiate space that we're targeting and the precedent that already exists. So from 2001 to 2025 is our development timeline uh, and the costs that again are, are relatively small in typical drug development. So, um, you know, we're in a nice niche where we're developing uh, a further upon drugs that already exist. Uh, but the, the market opportunity uh, is, is still significant. We have uh, data from a company called Health Advances, which advises us that in current market conditions, uh, peak annual sales could reach anything up to $200 million a year. Uh, so for product number one, that's very beneficial. We then intend to rinse and repeat the same process again, 505B2 process with buprenorphine, methylphenidate, work our way down the easily abused drugs uh, and, and rinse and repeat the process. So buprenorphine, again, is a product that we were advised should have peak annual sales of up to $130 million. So product number one and two, which could be on the market uh, in a relatively short space of time versus typical drug discovery and drug de development, uh, could reach $330 million, um, you know, quite soon. Gareth, you really lay out how Aversa Fentanyl and the other drugs that you could combat with your patches are going to work. I want to know about other products in your development pipeline and how do you plan to expand your product offerings in the coming years? Yeah, so I think, you know, outside of Aversa, which is the core focus, well, firstly, we have a very definite development plan with Aversa. There is endless applications for it currently on the market today, um, you know, working down the opiate family. There's an ADHD drug called methylphenidate, which we plan to uh, apply Aversa to also, which is in our pipeline. But as we are transdermal focused, Aversa is not the only technology the company has. Uh, you know, we've done some minor work uh, looking at the delivery of peptides and proteins using transdermal technology with some, uh, you know, decent opportunity there. This will be in the diabetes space or FSH, which is a fertility drug, typically drugs that have been historically injected uh, as transdermal technology continues to develop and, and improve we think there will eventually be a case where you could be getting your diabetes treatment or your fertility treatment via patch uh, over injection. Now, Gareth, I'm going to put you on the spot here for just a moment, if you don't mind. Flat out, what is the essential value proposition? Why should an investor take an interest in NutriBand right now? I think there's a number of things that you could focus as an investor if you look at the company. Uh, you know, our cap structure, firstly, is very clean. Um, as we run the company, you can see financially, uh, we're run very tight. The value for us is certainly in the in the shares and the shareholders we have on board. Um, right now, we're sitting at a market cap, which is probably going to be less than our gross profit once these products hit the market, um, and, and that's in the near term. Uh, structurally, as a company, we're very focused. We have uh, virtually no debt. We have no convertibles. We've kept everything as clean as possible, which we believe is typically not seen for a company of our size and our stage of development. Uh, as a listed company. So we've been very careful to achieve that. Um, and really, we don't know if that's been built into the price that we see today. Uh, I think the opportunity is that in the near term, we're looking at revenues uh, potentially in the hundreds of millions of dollars uh, with a, a good profit margin on a product like this. 
and this is just the beginning for us. We'll continue to expand and build upon that again. So coming back to the, the rinse and repeat model, we'll prove the model with fentanyl, and then it becomes very easily to apply a Versa to more and more products down the line as we continue to build and grow. Uh, so I think that's the real value that we show today. A company at the forefront of transdermal technology and a company helping people fight addiction. It's a great story, Gareth. Thanks for sharing it with us today. Thanks, Greg.